From Carly Fiorina to Mark Hurd and Leo Apoteca, Hewlett Packard has had its fair share of boardroom drama, but now shareholders will have more say or could have more say in selecting its board members. Bill George is a professor at Harvard Business School. He's also the former Medtronic chairman and CEO. He's also a board member of Goldman Sachs and ExxonMobil. And we've also got Jeff Sonnenfeld. He is a senior associate dean at the Yale School of Management and a CNBC contributor. Gentlemen, great to have you with us. Good uh, to be back. Take a look at this measure. Investors who own at least 3% of Hewlett Packard shares for at least three years would be allowed to nominate up to 20% of the company's director. Surely this is a great step, Bill. But at the same time, that bar seems to be very high because according to holdings, only four Hewlett Packard shareholders would actually qualify to do this under the proposed terms. Well, I'm not sure that it is a good move for the long term. I think this sub company and a board that's been beset with instability for 13 years through uh, many, many board changes and four CEOs, all who came from the outside. And I think Ray Lane is clearly trying to remake the board uh, with new directors, which is to his credit. He's replaced uh, many of the board members. Uh, and it's a board that's back on its heels. And it's a board that's been too short-term focused. And my concern is this will make it more short-term focused. They have three private equity people on the board who are quite well qualified. Ralph Redworth, who is the uh, best, uh, I believe, of the, uh, if you will, activist investors has been very sound, but I really wonder if they're ever going to get to figure out what business they're in, get their strategy right, decide who they're competing with. You mentioned IBM. Look, there's just such a sharp contrast with such a long-term view, and yeah. Hewlett Packard just can't keep uh, rustling around for its 325,000 employees and its myriad of investors out there. They have to represent the best interests of the long-term shareholders, not just the most short-term shareholder who makes the most noise. Right. At the same time, though, I mean, short-term shareholders, I mean, the requirement here is that, according to the according to this proposal, that uh, the shareholder would have to own the shares, 3% stake, for at least three years. So, Jeff, is this really a measure that could backfire and, and tilt the advantage toward the short term when they're actually saying, you know what, we want major shareholders who have been in the stock for at least three years? No, I think that's exactly right. That's a very high bar, very high hurdle, uh, to have 3% and three years. That's what been under discussion for a, a dozen years. It uh, almost passed with the SEC several years ago when Bill Donaldson was the chair. And of course, Mary Shapiro put it through, and then the courts, the courts are reversed it this summer. But uh, Bill, you kind of surprised me a little bit because you're um, basically uh, mimicking the American Chamber, U.S. Chamber of Commerce position against this and thinking it's too short-term oriented. But three years of ownership is not a hit-and-run uh, operation. And in fact, I can appreciate the idea that you don't want people that are very highly specialized interests voting as if it's a municipal city council meeting but uh, and basically it's a suspicion of union pension funds that has people nervous about this Melissa but there's no evidence that that's a problem and in fact owners with this amount of block really should have a voice and this is a much better board you know you talk about IBM IBM under John Akers before uh, uh, you know Mr. Gerstner went in there was it you know it, we thought it was going to disappear on us it was going to go the way of uh, where Kodak might be going, you know, so that you can see great companies come back and this HP board is already more than half of them are new and the ones who were there were quite heroic figures in the past and they they represent technology industries and heavy industry and not just invest, you know, uh, um, the financial organizations. It's I think it's a very good board now. It took them a while. Right. Uh, Bill, do you want to quickly respond to the notion of the short term versus the long term shareholder? Three years does seem like, uh, you know, a fair amount of time. That's a fair amount of time. It could be three, could be two tomorrow, one year, the next. Uh, I'm concerned that I think you need to have chemistry in the board room. The boards I've been on have had great chemistry, and that's why the companies have been successful in the long term. And this is a board that's never had chemistry. They've been shooting each other. I want to make sure, as an investor in Hewlett Packard, that they represent the long-term shareholders' interests. are often quite silent. And, uh, and have an opportunity and not just responding to, uh, to the ISS's of the world and think right. about you, you their don't strategy want to, you, you and how they get there. It took IBM, you're right, that was 25 years ago, Jeff. And they, had, they, had, they, they also had a very congenial board, Bill, taking them off the cliff. Well, uh, en Enron had a very congenial board. It was called Groupthink. <laughs>
right, so to guys. have some dissent let's, is let's not agree the same thing to as disagree. disloyalty. I, I have literally 20 seconds, Jeff, so I want to issue you a challenge. Give me your quick 20-second take on Callister's effort to improve or get Facebook to improve its corporate governance. And specifically, they have an issue with Mark Zuckerberg having controlling uh, voting rights and also the ability of, of him to actually pass that control onto a, a successor. Well, on this one, you might be surprised. I, 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 I will uh, differ from the governistas uh, that if you're really betting on Facebook, you're really betting on Mark Zuckerberg. We saw a similar thing with, with Zynga, a similar thing with Groupon, oversized shares, with the, uh, and maybe it's the right thing to do, although it's certainly not prevailing best practice with good governance. But even Ford Motor Company today, and through its history, it's been 40% controlled by the Ford family, only 15 or 13% ownership, and nobody would say that, you know, the more equitable governed GM was better governed than Ford. Right. Well, I just want to add on to that, Jeff. Ten seconds, I think Bill. that Zuck and Cheryl have been uh, very good at protecting the Cheryl's company so they strong. can go for the long term, like Amazon has, like Apple has. I think that's very much to their credit. All right, let's end on that congenial agreement. Guys, great to have you with us, Bill. And